Have you ever heard the expression going to see a man about a horse? Well, it's, it's an old English idiom that uh, basically means uh, someone might be excusing themselves euphemistically to go to the restroom or go buy a beer. Today, I'm going to see a man about a boat. It has nothing to do with drinking. Well, maybe it does. Today, I'm going to see a man about a boat. Um, a catamaran that was, uh, that made the passage from the Philippines to Palau, and the boat sits in Palau. I guess the crew abandoned the boat in Palau. And this guy wants to talk to me this morning about maybe bringing this boat from Palau to Guam. So I'm off to meet some uh, boatless captain. Well, after several uh, meetings with the uh, boat captain, Captain Larry, it looks like uh, he's going to have me come with him to Palau to help him fetch his boat back. All the stars have to be lined up for this one. We'll see. It'll be an adventure. The plan was to sail the boat from uh, Malakal Harbor in Palau, 850 nautical miles to the northeast to Guam, where they uh, likely stop off in Yap and then another, hopefully, uh, another stop off in Ulithi Atoll to do some snorkeling. And then uh, we would continue on from Ulithi into Apra Harbor, Guam, which would be the new home for Kamsa, and that's the name of the boat, Kamsa. Checked in at the Guam International Airport. We're getting ready to board our flight for Palau. Palau is uh, about a one and a half hour flight from here, maybe less depending on winds. But uh, next stop, the boarding gate. I'm a traveling spirit, I've seen many shores. From the West Pacific to the island of Kenya. They treat me like a son anywhere I go. And even though no one can tell, I still feel that I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. Leave me stranded, I know how to handle it all. been met by the hotel guy here to pick us up and we're taking this ride right here to the West Plaza Hotel there's Captain Larry hey. pleasure to meet you Captain Larry <laughs> hotel we found our hotel last night but it was a little too dark to uh, the video and we're not really downtown Palau but we're uh, we're close to the boat. Time for some coffee. Well, we're coffee. We found the coffee house and it's right on the bay or one of the bays. After coffee we've got to locate the boat. It's out there somewhere. I think it's uh, out in that direction. Coffee first. I have learned that no one else can carry this load It's a train where I'm the only passenger on board Oh, there is beauty to enjoy on this road But even so, I still feel that I'm alone I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone Leave me stranded, I know how Handle it all on my own I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone Leave me stranded, I know how To handle it all on my own On my own
I think we're going to see the boat already. It's one of those catamarans out there. Not sure which one, but it's one of them. There's that one right there, straight out from the dock. And quicker than we can get a cup of coffee, here come Mr. Steve with our ride. Mr. Steve uh, is on board this boat right here, this trimaran, and he's been keeping an eye on the boat for all these months that has been moored here in the Malakal Harbor. Once ashore at the dive center, uh, Mr. Steve met with us and kind of gave us the lowdown on what to expect on the boat's condition. And from what the way he described it, things were not very pretty. But in any case, we uh, headed down the dock and for the dinghy and we were on our way to get the first glimpse of the boat. Stand by for heavy seas. Should have warned you. Well, we're here on the boat, and uh, some things look okay, some things don't. But overall, it's not a pretty sight. A lot of the sheets and halyards are uh, bad shape. Clutches haven't been used in a long time. Um, blocks, blocks uh, they, uh, everything needs to be cleaned up pretty well. But bird shit all over the deck. Um, uh, electrically, the solar panels and everything's charged the batteries. We had the motors running. Um, we had the motors running uh, for about an hour today. But uh, I, uh, I have some issues with the uh, with the condition of the boat and I'm going to show you one of them right here this is the uh, we're going to be looking at the, the main rigging for the, uh, the mast mainstay uh, if you can see that right there there's actually three broken strands of wire and this is a, a critical component on a boat if we were to get in some uh, pretty heavy winds um, we can't afford to lose the mast. That's just the way it is. But uh, there's a lot of good things about the boat. The trampolines are brand new; it's recently been replaced. Uh, bow sprit's in good shape. The main roller furling and the head sail, good shape. This sail here is only about uh, four years old, but we're going to unfurl it tomorrow just to see what it looks like. But I think the bottom line is here. We need to put this trip off until this boat is uh, ready to go. It uh, could take about a week to 10 days to really get this boat ready. Uh, like I said, the motors, motors are running today. We had the motors running today good for about an hour. All the electronics are working, uh, with the exception of the true wind. The uh, looking at the sun here, I'm sure, but. The vane is working, but the uh, the Windex, the actual bird, is not spinning. So we've got no true wind indicator. But uh, it's just a mess. So uh, tomorrow we'll make a decision on what we're going to do. It doesn't look pretty right now. So I'm going to head back to shore. And uh, I'm going to uh, have a beer back there. Well... After some serious discussion, Captain and Larry and I reached a decision that we have to put this boat trip off for another day. There's too much work needs to be done on the boat, right Larry? Sorry man, yeah. but right now it's time for this. Yeah. So that boat will sit there for a while longer. The following day we took another trip out to the boat. Then, with permission of the dive center operations manager, we motored the boat back to the dock to make it easier to get some work done. We raised the stubborn mainsail and unfurled the headsail. 
the main mast track obviously needed a good waxing. The captain had already located a replacement mainstay, and it would be used to replace the defective port side stay sometime in the near future. Mr. Steve said that he would be the one to ascend the mast and replace the stay. We discovered the anchor windlass motor also had a bad connection and would not operate electrically. It too would need some work. We loaded most of all the provisions that we brought with us. We used fresh water at the pier to do some basic general cleaning of the cockpit, the boat decks, and the lines. Over the course of the next couple days, we were afforded the use of the pier while all the dive boats were out. And we had the boat back under mooring by mid-afternoon each day when all the dive boats would return. The captain also met with some volunteers who worked at Sam's Dive Center and arranged for some cleaning and maintenance after we left. They happily agreed to provide some basic cleaning labor for some sideline earnings. Steve was in charge, of course, but he also had his own boat to take care of. We hung out at the dive center for the better part of the next three days, giving the boat some much needed attention while the captain made further assessments, generating new plans to get the boat ready for another delivery attempt. Although this sailing adventure ended at the pier for me, the trip to Palau was as enjoyable as it could be. Although I have my PADI open water dive certification, I was prohibited by my doctor to do any dives just yet, as I just had back surgery three weeks prior to making this trip. It kind of sucks to be in one of the world's most reputable dive locations at one of the most busy dive tour centers in the Western Pacific and just have to watch the world go round. Well, not really. The people were friendly. The food was good, and I got to help support the Palau Brewing Company by consuming some of their Red Rooster Amber beer. Only in Palau, right? Thank <laughs> you.